Last night, I got a call from my dad that his laptop was acting super strange. We suspect it's a power delivery issue. And uh, so we are going to take Fix or Flop Mobile. I've got most of my camera gear loaded up and uh, we're about to hit the road. This one should be a fun one. I hope you'll stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. All right, here we are. It's my parents' house, and uh, we're going to quickly go over the description that he gave me over the phone about what has been going on with his laptop. First off, it's a work laptop, so uh, it's a bit old, and he's saying that it won't hold a charge. Uh, he's tried two different power uh, adapters uh, that plug into the wall, and neither of those allow the laptop to even stay on. I think it's a battery issue and we've been a bit preemptive and ordered a replacement battery. It's not OEM because Dell's charging like 120 bucks for theirs. This one was only 60 bucks. And sure enough, here it is. It's nice having uh, overnight parts. I just had this sent to his house. Over to the main camera now. I just want to clarify that we are not in the studio. So I do have my, my primary camera and a microphone set, but uh, we're not going to have ideal lighting conditions here. So bear with me, just part of being on the road. Uh, so this here is the laptop in question. This is a Dell Precision 7530. Like I said, it's about five or six years old on the original battery still. And, uh, well, yeah, you can see uh, it's my dad. So <laughs> he uh, tapes his uh, webcam, so I don't blame him actually. And yeah, it's been used. It has been serving him well, but he has noted that over the years, the battery uh, life, uh, the health of the battery has diminished quite a bit. Apparently it only holds about a 45 minute charge just browsing the web, which is no good. That's another telltale sign that I think the battery is dead. Uh, now this is the, uh, the, the power adapter. And you can see we got a blue light here. This is plugged into the wall. This is a good sign that this is okay. Again, we have a backup of these as well. And they both exhibit the same symptom uh, as is the case when the laptop is not connected to anything at all. So just to show you, I'm gonna plug this in and we're going to attempt to power it on. So it's in now. We're gonna push the power button and here's what happens. So we get lights on the keyboard and we do have the fan spool up and then that's it, power cuts out. This thing stays on for like five seconds tops and then it, uh, it just kicks the can. And same goes from the device is not connected to power on its own, just using battery power instead. We'll power on, everything lights up on the keyboard. You do hear those fans spool up, not sure if it's a single fan or two, and then it cuts off again. So exact same symptom before and after connecting the adapter tells me that it is probably not the adapter. And again, we have a second one that does the exact same thing. Both are known working. We need to take this thing apart. Now this is what the replacement battery looks like. It is again, not OEM, but uh, I didn't want to pay double the price for what I believe to be similar performance. The only real negative review I saw on this on Amazon was that it probably isn't actually a 97 watt hour battery, maybe a bit less than that, but it should still be a lot better than the current battery in his current laptop. It uh, definitely needs to be replaced. At the very least, we'll probably keep this in even if this doesn't fix the issue just because his original battery is so old. You can see the one connection that we're gonna have to mind is right here. Everywhere else, it's just gonna be uh, fastened to the chassis with Phillips or Torx screws. But it's also really nice of the seller of this battery to include tools in the battery's box for disassembly. I think these are the only tools we're gonna need, some small Phillips and some small Torx, even some pry tools. That's actually really cool. I didn't think I'd get that. It's a nice bonus. So let's start with these Phillips screws surrounding the machine. Again, I do not think this laptop has ever been opened. So uh, well, this would be a bit of an experience. We'll see how dirty it is as well after five plus years of use. A few moments later. And I think that is it. Here we go. The internals of the device. Nice thing to see right off the bat. We do have uh, removable low profile DDR3 or four. And this lower section here is really our only concern. It's where the battery is. So we're just gonna remove three more Phillips screws and mind this ribbon cable, which I assume is connected to the main board. Yep, here. And this is what sends power to pretty much everything else in the device. Oh, that's a really weird connector. It just pulls straight up. I figured I'd have to pull a tab up or just pull back, but uh, this one actually pulls upward. Now we can pull up and lift the original battery out. I don't see any bulging or anything that would suggest that the battery is uh, definitely on its way out, but just with age over time, 
these cells will degrade. It is a bit dirty, but overall, uh, yeah, on the surface looks pretty good. And you can see what these two look like next to each other, OEM and aftermarket, the same dimensions, of course, looks like we've got the same little plastic bracket as well, and the same connector. And we're gonna gently slide it in, pretty much in the reverse order that we removed it. Tighten things back down and carefully reconnect this cable. We'll reinsert the back cover. All of these screws have just been sitting in here the entire time. Tighten these last Phillips screws back down and here we are, a reassembled laptop. It took literally no time at all. Battery replacements in most of these are pretty straightforward, which is nice considering there's a lot of stuff in here that uh, is not easy to fix. But like I said, after five plus years of using a Dell laptop, a battery replacement probably isn't the worst idea. Now it's time to give it a whirl. I'm actually not gonna connect the power adapter. I wanna see if there's any charge in the battery by itself, or if at the very least we get something similar to what we saw before. I'm really hoping that's not the case. So it does turn on. Looks like the keys are being lit. Look at that. That was all it was, a bad battery. It, it sounded an awful lot like either a bad battery or a bad power adapter when he described the situation, which again was why I was so confident in ordering a replacement. It thankfully didn't cost too much money. And uh, it looks like this battery already came with a decent charge in it. So we're gonna try connecting it to his uh, Dell, his OEM adapter try to see if the battery will hold a charge in the long run, and then I'll report back with the actual life of the battery uh, in a daily use for my dad. Again, he just usually does like web surfing and stuff, emails, it's like call center stuff. So um, it's not super intensive work. There's no reason why a battery this big and a device this big should be lasting only 45 minutes tops, even at full display brightness. So. Um, we'll see, but for now we're gonna connect it, make sure that it holds a charge and doesn't, you know, explode or anything. It's been about 15 minutes between the last clip and this one, and the laptop has stayed on without issue. And let's see here if it charges. We'll check the display as well. So far, this uh, connector is a bit loose. That might just be because of the age. But uh, my dad tells me that he's only gonna have this laptop for about uh, three or four more months. So then you can finally get rid of it. 12 seconds later. Well, uh, yeah, things took a turn right after connecting that power adapter. So you, you saw before with the replacement battery, the laptop was running fine, loaded into the desktop just fine. We power cycled it a few times, no problems at all. Didn't, didn't notice any you know, irregularities. And then we connected, where is it? This right here, power adapter. Now you might be thinking, oh, Greg, so you said this was good before and obviously it's not now. If you connected this and the laptop fried, then uh, it's gotta be this to blame, right? Like we said before, this one and another one, an exact replacement of this, were giving the same symptoms for the laptop. And it's highly unlikely that both of these are bad and also at the same time exhibiting the exact same symptoms. So after looking at it a bit more, and probing a few places. This is my dad's very old school fluke meter. You guys would think this was interesting to see. Uh, it turns out this is actually delivering the correct voltage. It is stepped to 19 and a half volts, 12.3 amps at 240 watts. And sure enough, probing the uh, actual connector itself, 19 and well, 19 and some change volts. It's a little under 19.5, but nothing to uh, freak out about. And we actually confirmed that we're getting the exact same voltage to the main board via this cable here. Just looks like one connector to another. There's nothing really fancy going on in here, but I was curious if this was to blame, it was not. We also checked the voltage there and it was also reading 19 and again, some change. The only other thing that I think it could be at this point is the main board, the area in between the power brick, which we rolled out early on, and the battery, which we thought was to blame. It's, it was just one big tease because this thing worked no problem. Now I'm not getting any voltage reading from this battery, uh, nothing. Like it looks completely shot, no voltage. Um, and, and in fact, actually his original Dell battery, which I put back in here, is reading. We, re we actually read some voltage from a few different pins reading about five or six volts. So he's got to have some issue in between the two. And uh, it's just, again, it's beyond my tooling and my know-how to know how to fix. 
Whenever you don't know how to do something, don't act like you do. You can cause a lot more damage, especially in situations like this. This is a work laptop. I have already taken out his uh, personal storage drive. Actually, it's over here. So this is his M.2, and it has pretty much everything he needs that's important for work on it. I don't know what replacement laptop he's gonna get from his company, but I told him to take this out just in case. We might be able to simply install it into the new laptop, let drivers update, and then we can get all that data out of there. And at the very worst, we can connect this to another machine I have in the office and migrate data that way. I've tried removing his DDR, I think it says DDR3 or DDR4, I have to actually check that. It is DDR4, SK Hynix memory. Uh, tried single DIMM, both DIMMs removed, inserted, swapped around, no change at all. Tried removing his Wi-Fi card, other things that I could get to very easily here. None of that fixed it. In fact, now if I connect this battery back to his laptop, it doesn't even power on at all. Like nothing, no LED, no fan spinning, nada. His original Dell battery still has a little bit of life left in it. I think the voltage is, I, I don't know. It says that the output type should be 11.4 volts. I'm not reading anything like that here on these, uh, uh, from these pinouts, but, uh, it is at least allowing the system to turn on temporarily and then it shuts right back off. Pretty much the same thing that you saw when we started this video, the same symptom. So we're back to square one. Unfortunately, 60 bucks down the drain with this thing. I'm not gonna try returning it. I don't think that that's right to do uh, because it is likely something that uh, we did ourselves by swapping and connecting. If there's some dirty power being sent to the battery through the main board, I mean, that's what killed this. This isn't the fault of the manufacturer, so we're not gonna try to get our money back there. At the end of the day, it's only 60 bucks anyway, so it's not a huge deal. That really is a bummer because we literally had it up and running again. We fixed it, we just didn't permanently fix it. And that's why it's so important that we check all variables. Now again, I don't think that this adapter is to blame just based on our own measurements with a multimeter, but combining this with the laptop, which anyone would do, because obviously you have to charge it at some point, that's what kills the batteries in here. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, Greg, it, just send it to a board repair specialist. It shouldn't cost too much money and it'll get your dad up and running as quickly as possible. It doesn't really work that way with these company laptops. They want their hands on it if they can help it. And even if it means just outright replacing the unit with something newer, that's gonna cost them more money in the long run, they'd rather do that. They have their own reasons, uh, business write-offs and things. That's why we're just sending it back to the company for a full replacement. It's just unfortunately not as quick and easy of a fix as we thought. I really hate flops, I really do. It's like a punch to the ego gut. I'd, I would have loved to have fixed my dad's laptop and, uh, and been like, yeah, yeah, I took care of it. I took care of it for him. That wasn't the case. We uh, got a bit excited in the beginning only to realize that I hadn't actually fixed it. I mean, I kind of did, but I kind of didn't. The, the real problem is just something I cannot address. Thanks so much for watching again and thanks for learning with me.